Hi, welcome everybody to my session, NoSQL, SQL database for developer and security officer. My name is David Itzak, DBA. <clears throat> this is my profile, over 24 years of experience, SQL Server, Oracle, Cybers, Adobe, Cloudera. I've lectured in a lot of sessions around the world, three degrees, but let's start. <clears throat> This is my previous lectures. So what is our agenda? Let's talk about DB Ranking Engine, NoSQL database introduction for developer, MongoDB latest release 6.0 for developer and security office, Redis Enterprise Edition on Windows Docker for developer and security office, a little bit about, about SQL injections, and summary and questions. It's a lot of material, the agenda the presence and the code will be available on the GitHub for you. So what is DB ranking, DB ranking Engine? DB Ranking Engine rank all the database. You can see that you rank the database management system according to their popularity. You can see that MongoDB and Redis on NoSQL database is on the five and the six TH uh, place on the ranking. So you can see that they are very, very popular. So we'll talk about MongoDB and Redis. Here you can see Oracle, MySQL, SQL, and Postgres. So what are NoSQL databases? <clears throat> Notice, NoSQL no database, the need for NoSQL database is because modern applications need a lot of storage. They exceed the storage capability of RDBMS. RDBMS have a limit of how many storage you can store. Yeah, one application is scalability. They need to be scalable all over the globe. Modern application need to be available 24 hours. They need to be distributed globally. <clears throat> User should read and write anywhere to this NoSQL database. We want to do a reduction of software and other costs because we need a lot of servers, a lot of storage all around the world. So NoSQL means not only SQL. It means that we use not only the SQL language as a query language. So this is a robust set of the technologies that will enable us to store data and with the performance we need. It's all about open source, non-rational distributed database. The key advantages are, of course, availability, for tolerance, scalability. So no SQL database are schema free. They usually don't have any a specific schema, Pologic persistence, they have different ways to store different data, and then can be scaled out. This is the main, this is the type of NoSQL database, it's very, very important. We have key value store, key value store already is DynamoDB and React. They usually would use key and a value, you can see it here. Data element is value that corresponds to the key. Column store, column store data right in column. Why in color? Because in color, we can do a more uh, aggregate queries in more uh, effective way. So it can make aggregate queries over a large amount of data, very, very faster, like column store indexes in SQL Server. Edgebox and Bigtable are column store database. Document store, like MongoDB, CouchDB, they extend the key value ID the, the, the record is a document, is a JSON, which is JSON. You can do complex NoSQL option, we'll see it in the lecture. Each document contains a unique ID which identifies these documents. So this is document store. GraphDB like Neo4j, it's based on the graph theory. The elements are, you see it, are no edges and properties for the node and the edges. And we can do queries over this data much faster about to graph database. So this is the, the main uh, the main OSQL database. What is a cap theory? Cap theory means that we have three properties. It's consistency, it means every read fetch the last write, it will be written. We have availability, it means that read and write always succeed. We have partition tolerance, that means that <clears throat> also if there is a, a loss, the, the, that uh, there is no data loss, okay? 
So system will continue to function where, even when there is data loss. So we have this triangle of availability, consistency, and partition tolerance. So you see that RDBMS, RDBMS are have characters of availability and consistency. It's very obvious. You can see that consistency and partition tolerance are the main character of MongoDB Redis. We we'll talk about them. And there are availability of partition tolerance are the main, the main character of Cassandra, CouchDB, and etc. So partition tolerance is important that it must be for no SQL database. This partition tolerance, you can see it here. So we have uh, in OSC database, we have what, what the best approach, right? Best approach means basic availability. DB should always be available most of the time. Most of the time, soft state. Temporarily, there will be inconsistency in the NoSQL database. Eventual consistency means that system will come be to a consistent state at the end after a certain period. So this is the uh, this is the <clears throat> base approach of NoSQL database. Acid. This is taking for national database theory, and it means that transaction in database this will be written to database, and it will be either written or not. It's mean acid. So not OSCAL, no SQL DB support acid transaction because when you use acid transaction it become very, very slow. Acid acid is supported by computer science uh, server. You can see the books here. It mean that you can improve mathematically that transaction will be written in the database. So let's talk about the latest release of MongoDB 6.0 for developer security officer. I believe in books, I believe in video. This is the books I use usually of APRES, APRES, uh, APRES, MongoDB, RCPS, MongoDB for the design and MongoDB for tuning. And from this MongoDB documentation, docs, MongoDB.com. Also documentation of Parkuna server for MongoDB. This is another flavor of MongoDB. Azure Cosmos DB, which have FPI for MongoDB. And I also use, uh, I use the, videos from, uh, from Backup and Pluralsight, but I use the latest documentation, the latest release of MongoDB 6.0. So why should we use the MongoDB? You see it's very popular. It's open source and written in C++. It's document database, IP formless, usual IP formless. Its language is very rich, we'll see it. It has high availability feature. Horizon scalability, it's mean you can scale it more and more and more and more and more without any compute, with by, by adding more and more computer. We have multiple storage engine also use only one main engines and its popularity. So MongoDB document model is using JSON. This is JSON. Let's talk about JSON. It's open source standard format for data interchange. Docu uh, document DB use JSON format to store the records. This is the JSON. Record is a document like the RDBMS. Document is combination of fill and value. So let's see. Collections, it's like the table, why? Because collection takes all documents with the same uh, character and collect them. So collection is table. Array consists of list of value enclosed by these brackets, straight brackets. You can see it here. You can see the array. We have square brackets. This is an array. Object consists of one more name value per format by name and value. So you can see this is object. This is object. Name, va name value, name value, and this is separation between the objects, <coughs> the value, sorry. Uh, so the value here, the value here can be unicode strings, uh, standard format, numbering, boolean, array, or objects. So you can see that the value here is in, uh, can be integer, can be string, you can see it here, etc., etc. So this is a collections, name, value, objects, array. So what is the advantage of document database? Advantage is also easy to send disadvantages. You can see the rational, uh, the rational diagram of the database here of order product schema in rational form. And this is the doc equivalent document. In many programming language, document is called one to native data type to JSON. You can embed documents inside document well when you are doing extensive joins. Here, 
means Jones, John Jones. We can make all this and put it in one document. And this is very intuitive data model. It's flexible schema. The JSON is universal document. We can query the data anyway. We can distribute scalable database. So MongoDB is schemaless. It's advantage and it's ventures. So it has document collections like table. You can see it, but you can see collection of person. We have two documents here, each with different fields, content and size. You can see it's uh, uh, one people. You can see one people. You can see another people with it's the same name, group, etc. etc. These, these are two documents with different fields, content and size. What are the main principles of schema modeling? <clears throat> so we should remember that there is no SQL alter table in MongoDB. So we have to choose the correct model before we start to work. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to change it. So what are guided visual principles? First, we should avoid joins. MongoDB supports simple joins capability using aggregate framework. It supports join, but trying to ensure that all our critical query could be found in the same place with single, single collections does we really avoid the heavy joins. Redundancy. We can encapsulate relevant data into single document. For example, if we have product collection and order collection, we could put all the order collections in the product names within the order details. But if you want to change the product name, you'll have to change it multiple places. And update operation will be time consuming. So we should be aware of how to manage our redundancy. We have one six megabyte limit, more than the one six limit byte on size of individual documents. Consistency, MongoDB su support consistency in transaction and ACID, but they require special programming and they are heavy on MongoDB. They are significant constraints. So if you want to do it, it can be, uh, <clears throat> so if you want to maintain consistency, you should include data element in a single document to avoid these uh, transactions. Monitor memory. We want to ensure that most operation in more DB document will be in the memory. Therefore, we should, inc uh, we should, we should uh, ensure that our document will, will not be very large. So all the key be outload to the memory. So we should, <coughs> sorry. So we should reduce the number of domains that can fit into the memory. We have two approaches in schema modeling, linking these embedded. Okay. So the two main approach embedding means that every being all the information should be put in a single document. Linking mean linking collection means that we're using pointer to our data in other collections. It's like RDMS 3th normal form model. So you can see the linking paradigm paradigms. So you can see that we have customer order line 19 products in the RDBMS uh, entity model. If we look here, we see that we have document of customers, document of orders, document of line 19, and products. In the other extreme approach, where the body design, we place absolutely all information relating to order into a single document. So you can see that we have here all in one documents, but in all, you can see it here. Okay. In the customer, we put all the order. But if we have we have customer, we have products, we have orders, we have items, the following indexes should be defined. For example, order uh, <clears throat> on order examples embedded order, order uh, <clears throat> customers, on customers. On order, etc. It's a customer ID. Order status. If we want that our search will be very efficient, we should declare these indexes on our documents. We have JSON and BSON. What is BSON? BSON is binary JSON. We interact with MongoDB with JSON. JSON document for queries, admin, command, and configuration. MongoDB internally store JSON in BSON. BSON provide a number of officer data type which is not supported by JSON, like string boolean number, array date, row binary. Okay, sorry. 
the format of JSON, binary JSON, reserve some bytes to indicate document size for efficient search, so it's more efficient. It can be, uh, its format is more easily decoded, encoded, and compressed of JSON. So again, JSON is more efficient than JSON, but you don't have to, com com uh, to convert implicit from JSON to JSON in, in, in MongoDB because MongoDB do it implicitly. Replication, what is replication? It's a process of taking one instance and copy the data to another instances for redundancy and availability. So you can see what we have replica set of primary server to two servers. To two servers. Okay. We can see we can see chain replication where Mongo <coughs> when MongoDB process copy the data from the primary server to secondary server and this secondary server do replication to another servers. Okay. Change operation is recorded in the log of operation, which means it's called oplog in MongoDB. It do not take the binary data, it take an operation in a log of transactions. So this is replication. Sharding is like partitioning. Single server cannot hold a lot of data, so we take the data and split it. So here, the, this because we have a large data set and we have high throughput with team of CPU and IO, and we want to distribute it. So here you can see that we take the data, distribute it between two shards, two more shards. There is config server which take, which take the application and direct them to the right shard. Okay, here you can see how we do a shard cluster with our application. We, we have a sharded cluster with two shards. Okay, you can see it here. With replication. What is MongoShell? It's interactive, in, uh, interactive JavaScript interface to MongoDB for query up the data perform administrative operations. It's a component of MongoDB distribution. When you start Mongo, it's a process of uh, server MongoDB, MongoShell will be connected to MongoDB instance, but Mongo is replaced by MongoDB shell, Mongosh. It's a new, it's a new shell introduced by MongoDB, uh, MongoDB. So let's talk about the chain. Database is database. Table is collection. Row is JSON, JSON document. Column is field. Index is index. MongoDB has, have also indexes. You can see it here. So this is terminology. We pass it. MongoDB service is MongoD. MongoDB client is MongoD. Okay, you can see table collection, row, document, column, field, index, index, well, query views, the result of view MongoDB, uh, transaction, transaction, starting form, MongoDB 4.2, a master slave, primary, secondary, there is also uh, in SQL Server and application, uh, in SQL Server, in MongoDB, sorry, there is also replication, etc., etc. But you can see that we have the same, this is the terms in RDMS and MongoDB. This is the type in MongoDB, double string, object etc., etc., etc. This is a theme. You can go to the link here and see all the data types. Let's install MongoDB community server on our, on, on our Windows server, and then install MongoDB shell. Let's show the process. First, we have to go to, to the site and download MongoDB community server. I've downloaded the latest release, 600. We have to, inter, 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 to interact with MongoDB, you have to use MongoDB uh, Compass, which is a GUI graphical interface for MongoDB for MongoDB company. We can use Visual Studio Code and Azure Database Extension. I don't like it it's because it's less convenient. I like this to NoSQL Booster for MongoDB free. It's excellent for developers who will see it. We will use the free edition. We can download from NoSQLBooster.com. Uh, before installation, we should remove any previous installation of, of MongoDB. Uh, we should download MongoDB latest version of MongoDB. It's 6.0 community edition of Windows. You can see it here, MongoDB locally. We'll, we'll download the MSI install and run the installations. Welcome to MongoDB. Complete. Starting from MongoDB 4.0, the service will be run as network service, local admin, you can see it here, next, 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 and that all. Data directory, data directory is 
we have we have a parameter for that vector, vector which is minus minus db pass and we have a parameter for log director which is log log minus minus log pass <clears throat> when we install MongoDB we in C program file MongoDB server 6.0 bin we have the MongoDB, MongoDB dot conf this is configuration file in configuration file we have all the configuration of MongoDB if we will go to services we see that MongoDB here C program file MongoDB 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 minus config C program files and this is the this is configuration files so this configuration files we can see the log pass here okay we can see the uh, <coughs> we can see the uh, the data the data pass and the log pass here in the in the mongo.conf and we can see the network interface this means that our port is this is default 27017 and currently only local host can connect to the mongodb this is local host so mongodb shell i've talked about it is replaced by mongodb mongosh we should download mongosh from mongodb site okay and install the msi installation here after we install mongosh you interact with mongo mongosh minus minus help will give you all the commands you can see it here you should ensure that mongosh is in your pass environment mongosh is same as connect to mongodb localhost 201 and the port when we when we are installing mongodb you can connect to mongodb without password notice without password automatically it is open so you can find if you travel in the internet you can find on the instances but that you connect to them without password how just try connect to the server and write mongosh or mongod it's the same like mongosh mongodb local os and this is the port you can see it here once i'm connected i can write the, the query show the biz show the biz will give us the default the database in mongodb currently it's a main config and local and then exit if you want to connect to local instance with non default ports, simply simply write mongosh localhost and the other port or mongosh minus minus port and the other port. So as I told you, you have the MongoDB CFG. MongoDB CFG by default, it's you connect only to with your local host and with the port. So we change. Uh, <clears throat> so we would change it, and now we're telling the MongoDB. We remark bind np uh, local host and then write bind np all dot true. It's taking from MongoDB, uh, MongoDB documentation. It means that all the computer with all the IP can connect to MongoDB. Remember that when we're doing this, we should ensure that only computer that um, only computer that uh, you permit can connect to MongoDB. Instead of bind np all true, okay. You can use another command uh, with by uh, instead of bind IP my, uh, minus all true, you can go to bind IP and give it a list of all white lists of computers IP which can connect to MongoDB. In this demo, we permit all the computers to connect, but in your environment, in bind IP should give here a list of all the computers which are permitted to connect to MongoDB. After we did it, we should go and restart the MongoDB service. Once you have do it, we can connect to MongoDB. We can connect to MongoDB, like in, in the following way: hostname mongosh minus minus hostname here the hostname minus port and this is the port. So here we can connect, not through the localhost, uh, not only to the localhost, or also with the name of the host. So mongosh minus minus host and the hostname. Here the error message you get before you did this change. After you, you read here bad, bad IP or true, you are able to connect with the computer name mongosh minus host and is the computer name minus as port and the port. Okay, so bad IP or true means that you can connect with all the computer name to the MongoDB. You can see it here. And then I entered the database and, 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 and right here show DBs. So let's install Compass. It's very simple. You go and install Compass from here. 
then you install it and you can connect to MongoDB and the default port. You can install also VS Code and MongoDB for VS Code. I don't like it, but you can install it. You can see it here. And then connect to MongoDB. You can see new connection, MongoDB. But I love this tool of NoSQL Booster Free Edition. Okay, this tool, you download this tool, and here you type your server. <coughs> here you type your server. Uh, uh, after you install the tool, you type the server, localhost, uh, localhost, okay? And then, because we didn't authenticate uh, MongoDB, we didn't uh, ensure that we can connect with user and password, authentication is none, then connect, you can see it here. Once you connect, you have a lot of examples how to use MongoDB, let's pass on them. As a developer, if you install NoSQL Booster and run all, all these examples, you will know MongoDB. So let's do it fast. Once you install MongoDB, in MongoDB and NoS, once you install NoSQL Booster and connect, you should go to MongoDB Basic Code Operation, treat and LGS, and you see it. Use NoSQL Booster sample in MongoDB if you write, use NoSQL Booster database not exist, this database will be created, you can see it here. And then you can print, print a low MongoDB, the output, you can see the output, print a low MongoDB. You can also write to the console, console.log, like here. If you go to uh, MongoDB and write show DBs, this is the second example. You, this is the second script for NoSQL Booster. I told you you should uh, uh, pass on the script and learn MongoDB very fast with them. It will give you all the DBs. Admin and config and local are internal database of MongoDB. NoSQL Booster samples is the database we have created because we are right. Use NoSQL Booster samples. Uh, how can we use how can we use create and roll database? Very very simple. Use NoSQL Booster table. Then we create a collection, talk about this, show DBs, database will be created automatically when we are use, writing use NoSQL Booster. And then we can write drop DB drop database. Let's, 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 create, let's create and drop a collection. Let's create implicit collections. So in this, in this examples, we create a collection on the fly. How we create a collection on the fly? Let's do implicit creation. So movie is a uh, title, Star Trek year. This is the year. Show collection, we show you the collection. You can see the result here. We create a collection name, movies. Show collection, we show the collections. Okay. We can create explicit collections. Here we create, we create a cup collection, cup collections. <clears throat> a cup collections, this is a collection that we have declared on the side of collections. So, cap collection, we create cap collection here. Capped, true, this is the parameter. Size, this is the maximum size of byte for the cap collections. Max, this is the maximum number of documents. Show collection, we show other collections. You can see here the collections. This is the capped collections. And then we can drop the collections. DB movies, drop, will drop the collection. DB cap collection, drop the collections. <coughs> DB survey prod <coughs> mean drop the drop collection and here we do insert document DB survey insert 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 we will create the survey collections and here we put inside a document name a data new result you can see it here survey insert mean insert many so we can, here we can see a lot, a lot of uh, document in one insert, name, data, results, etc., etc. How do I know? Because I go here to the samples and run this script, and you can see the result here, the result of the documents. More, uh, <clears throat> something more uh, very important is the idea of objects. Implicitly, MongoDB will give ID to its documents. So first is draw employee drop. If we will insert here document with name Tom and name Bill, and then we'll write then we employ five for each print mean give us give us the objects in the document. And you can see that automatically 
there will be created ID for the documents. ID, object ID, is created by four times step, four times random values, and three bytes incrementing values. You can implicitly specify your own ID. In this example, the employee insert ID name, ID one name, check me. Insert ID, this is the ID, and name rules. And then if you run the query of find ID one for each print, it will give us the object with ID one. So again, you can, MongoDB will give every document ID. You can give implicit its ID. So this is the more or less thing. You can query, you can query documents. For example, we create a new, a, a new student documents with name, 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 with name Tom, name Bill, name Jenny Rose. We have four documents here. And then we can query it. Again, this is sample script for NoSQL Booster. So here we'll find the document with rows. So document student find name rows for each print. Well, uh, this is another query. DB student where name <coughs> uh, DB student uh, name not equal rows for each would mean find all the documents where their name is not equal rows. So you will pass all these uh, samples. See it here. Out of the documents, remove documents, count methods, limit and skip like NSQL Server, sort. Okay. This is the example here. Okay. This is example here. Example here. What amazing about NoSQL Booster that it can take your code and if you here push the code here, it will you translate it to the code you want here. You can see it here, MongoDB, Node.js, Node.js, Python, C-Shop, etc., etc. So this is script. This is the script embedded in NoSQL Booster. We can do also compressions. Compressions. This is another sample script in MongoDB Booster, for example. <coughs> we, can, we can create inventory documents, put all these documents with ID 1, 3, 2, etc., etc., and then tell him inventor will find where status is not equal B for each print. It will give us all the inventor where status is not equal B. And this is the result. You can see it here. <coughs> you can find, if you have array, so you can find the array with which array is equal to a specific value. DB inventor will find tag D for each print. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> so this is an example of an array. You can do logical operations, for example. This is, again, our inventory. Then find and perform logical with all operation. Find where quantity is less than 30 or greater than 40. This is the all. For each print will give us all the document where the quantity is less than 40 or higher than, uh, sorry, less than 30 and higher than 40. This is examples. You can query for elements. You can query for arrays. You can use expression for insert. We can do text search in MongoDB. This is example. For example, uh, <clears throat> this is this example. Let's insert, let's get a document and insert this. Now create index of the kind sub, uh, of the kind text on this text, and then we can query the text for for element. For example, db post find text search Node.js for each print. Let's find here where Node.js is appearing the text. Okay, so this is another example. We can do regular expression more DB. What amazing in MonoSQL Booster that you can query MongoDB with SQL embedded in NoSQL Booster for, uh, for NoSQL Booster. So this is all the example with SQL query to MongoDB because all the world know to use SQL query. So in this example, you can see that I can run MD run SQL query, select staff on employee. And this is how using NoSQL uh, query in NoSQL Booster, this is all the examples here. You can pass on them. I don't have too much time.
and this is how you use NoSQL Booster. Also, NoSQL Booster supports Fluent Query API, which is a training in instax which is more simple than the syntax in of MongoDB. Okay, so this is example zero. You can see it here. And this is all the examples. So, what are security checklists when we are using MongoDB? First, MongoDB Community Edition, the only application support is SRAM, which is the default, which is mean user and password, or when using certificate, 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 certificate authentication for the client and for the client, which means the client use certificate. MongoDB Mapper use LDAP or Kerberos. When we are uh, when you are uh, build your MongoDB instance, you should create configure role bell access. It means that you should create user administrator because by default there is no administrator user for MongoDB. And then for each database you should use, you should create user which have read, write permission, read permission, etc. etc. You should encrypt communication with TLS and SSL. You should encrypt protect data, uh, data at rest, data at movement. But it's only supported in MongoDB Enterprise Edition. You can do encryption of the data if you are using uh, Linux encryptions. But you should know that this is only Enterprise Edition ability. You should really limit network exposure. We see it. You can do whitelist of IPs which, will connect, which can connect to the MongoDB. You should audit your system activity. Only in MongoDB Enterprise Edition. In MongoDB Community Edition, you can only audit failed success login, that's all. So here we can see, you can see how you can limit your interface with binary IP. You can see it in Mongo CFG. You should give in binary, instead binary IP all. In binary IP, you should give you a list of all the IP which can connect to MongoDB. You, should, you can customize your port and change it from the default port. Here in the port. You can configure Mongo and MongoDB for TLS and SSL user using this uh, this in uh, MongoDB in MongoDB documentations. I don't have time, but this is how you could do it. You can do encryption in REST. So uh, encryption it's, it's, it's REST. It means that if data if the data is stolen, nobody can open it with a key. You can encrypt the volume. You can look at the volume, okay, the file system level using, if you don't have the enterprise editions, using your cloud provider or using Linux latest versions with full exceptions, you can, encry you can encrypt, you can, you can use encryption threads using uh, uh, MongoDB enterprise editions. It's supported by white right storage with the engine of MongoDB. Let's talk. So, what is authentication? Authentication is process of verifying the identity of the user. Authorization or access control determine the, what, what, to what the user have access in the recent operations. So, we talk about the methods. SQAM is default password, password encrypted in MongoDB. Okay, you can use certify, which is external. You can use only enterprise editions, LDAP or Kerberos where the privileges are defined in external to MongoDB. So if you're using Community Edition, the only chance you have is this SCRAM and Certify. So when you install MongoDB, it doesn't use user fees. Therefore, we need to create admin user, which can use or create other users. We have a lot of role in MongoDB, that have a sole user, that have a semi etc., etc. Et you can read about here. So how do you create admin user? You connect to your instance NoSQL Booster on Watch Minus Support, and then you run this command. You run this command, or you go to NoSQL Booster, add user, and root user. This will this code will be generated, and then you should put your user and password. You can see that the wall is root and run it. Then you should go <coughs> to the MongoDB CFG and end this Android security authorization is enabled. Then you should just start the service on MongoDB, run this command, admin command shutdown, and start it. And then you will be able to connect only with user and password. MongoDB is minus port, authenticate database admin, which is the default database of MongoDB, minus U admin, minus P, and then you have to put your password. You can see it here. 
<clears throat> you can see it here in NoSQL Booster. And that's all. Uh, how do you create DB user? Very, very simple. Simply go to NoSQL Booster, a user read write this database test. And then in database, a user will be created. A code will be created to create a user. DB create user. This is the user you should put the user and then the password. And the role. Here I choose read write for the DB. And you can update the user from NoSQL Booster. So again, we have the community edition, but in enterprise edition, you cannot use the community edition. So you have MongoDB enterprise server. The advantage is that you have in memory storage engines, which is more efficient, and it's more security. I should, I should say that we have another flavor of MongoDB, which is Percuna. You can see here from the site the difference between Percuna version and MongoDB versions. Open source, it's not free. It costs money. So you can see the difference. For example, Porcuna, Porcuna MongoDB. The Porcuna MongoDB, you can see it here. Support LDAP authorization, Kerberos, audit logging, log reductions in the open source versions. You can see it here. Where in MongoDB, it's only in the past editions. So you, cho you should choose between Porcuna, MongoDB, or community editions. Of course, you have Azure Cosmos DB, which has MongoDB APIs. You also Azure Cosmos DB emulator for local development and testing for MongoDB. So let's run fast and talk about Redis. About Redis. In this demo, I will introduce you Redis Enterprise on Redis Docker for developers and security officers. So why Redis? It's not a good database. It's a multi-model database. Why? Because they have a lot of models we can add. Okay, so it's in memory, it's very, very fast. MongoDB, uh, sorry, Redis, it's very fast database, very fast database, and they have built in replication with high availability. But it's very, very fast database and in memory database. Durability is ensure the database is available in the event of failure. So this is the of uh, Redis. Data start, start to storage in Redis, we have string list, sets, stored orders, hash, bits, streams. Hyperlog, we'll see it very immediately. So, what is Redis used for? Service site, for, uh, <clears throat> it, can, it can be installed on Linux, Mac, OS, Docker on Windows because it does, does not have flavor of Redis on Windows. You can do it here. You have Redis CLRs which you connect to the Redis. It support all, it support all the language, okay? Java, Node.js, C Sharp, PHP, C Sharp, etc., etc. It support everything. So why should you use Redis Enterprise again? Security. You can see it here, more than 8,000 unsecured Redis instances found in the cloud. Therefore, I, in my environment, use Redis Enterprise because of security. Beside of this, we have backup and storage ability, availability, and another models we can add on our Redis. So this is our Redis Enterprise use case for social application, intelligent caching, Pub and SAP, coming down, job and queues, built in analytic, native JS handling. This is uh, for those applications. Cache data between the application, the application and backend data store, session store. Large data set for analytic and cost of effective. Full text search, ghost patial, time series data, messaging queue. This is the all application of Redis Enterprise. So, in our demo, we'll use this. We create, this is taken from this uh, documentation. We create a Docker of Redis. So, first you have installed local engines. You should ensure that we have enough memory. And restart the Docker engine from, you can download the Docker client free from the Docker site. Then you should remove any container images of value from from your uh, container, how do you do it? Docker stop, docker ps minus a minus q mean remove stop all running container, remove all running container, docker volume ls, docker volume rms, volume mean remove all the volume, remove then remove all the images, docker rmi, docker images minus q, docker ps minus q, docker image minus q, docker ps minus a minus q will give you the ID of all running container, docker images minus q will give you the images 
the ID of all the images we have, and this is the input as the RMI command, the same, the same here. Now we pull from the hub uh, the image of Radis Labs and we save it to logger disk. So Docker save minus so this is the path to where to save the image. And this is the image we want to, to pull. Radis Labs, Radis. This image will be saved on the local disk and then we can take and put it anywhere also on this connected computer. Now we should copy the image to also disconnect network and load it. How do you do it? Docker load minus i and this is the path to the image. Docker image will show the images. And then on Windows, make that your Docker is configured to run Linux based container because ready to run only on Linux. And then we should run this command. This is from the site of uh, this is the command docker run minus d minus cap sys resource minus f this is the port this is the mapping of the port from container container port to the host port and this is the image you can see it here once you have done it you will set up a cluster like in redis enterprise so it's very very technical you go in click setup in the other configuration you should you should enter the FDQN, the name of the cluster. You should use, you uh, should enter your license key if you have one. You should enter your email and your password. You should configure TLS as an SSL. You should create a database. You go here, write this database and create a database, give you a name. And then, <coughs> Uh, and then you should you can create a database. This is talk I'm talking about the the ports, but the issue is not. Uh, and then you should create a database. How we connect to our database? Docker exact minus it rp bash mean connect to the rp container which is running to the bash shell. Then go to opt ready slab bin, and then run ready CLI, which is the CLI of the connector mode with me. So, to, sorry, to, to Redis. Ready CLI minus P. And this is the number of the port. Once you do it, you are connected to Redis. If you write here set key one, one, two, three, will give an error. You are not authenticated. You can see it here. We should authenticate. So, whose password? You should write whose password, which means authenticate with password. And then you should use the type of the password you have given when you connect to the Redis, and then set key one, set key one to three. So remember that is key value database. It means key one will have a value of one to three. Get key one will give us the value here. So how do we see all the running container? Docker ps mean show show all the containers anytime. Docker ps uh, sorry. Show, Docker PS will show the running container. Docker PS one say will mean show all the container anytime. How do you start a Redis container? Start Docker start RP. How do you delete all the database? Flash DB delete all the keys in the database. So you can see it here. Keys. This is the keys in the database. Keys star. Flash DB mean delete all the database and keys. There will be an empty array. You can see it here. So, <clears throat> Redis data model, data store in keys. Key and value. We have important command, set and get. Set command, create or change the value that corresponds to a given key. Get, get the value of a, key, a specific key. If you run set twice, the key will have the last value. So, the data structure are string list, sets, sorted set, hash ifs, bit array, streams, I don't know. So we have strings and bitmaps. So docker exec minus it rp bash mean connect to the bash. See the opt ready slash bin mean go to the bin and then ready cli minus p and this is the port connect to the redis. Os password mean authenticate with password. You should give your password. So set user Steve mean key uh, mean get uh, the key is user and the value is Steve. Get user will give us Steve. Set login counter hard one, sorry, mean create increment. <coughs> Simple string value as counter. So give you, so give you one. 
Increment login count, it will give us two. Get login count, it will give us two. You can see it here. Set key one to three, set key one to three, this is strings. Set one, A, B, C, this is a string. Type one, it's mean string. Set to hello, okay. Type two, it's string. Clear? Clear or share. String and bitmap. <coughs> so we have, so we have, a, in Redis there is a list. A, a list is a linked list. The write is very fast. Read can be very slow. So you can add value at the tail, the left, and write. So value with the list can be repeat, same value as different index with the list. So let's see example a bit more clear. L push, left push, user, Steve and Bob, mean to the li link list, push Steve and Bob. L index user, <coughs> zero, it's mean what is, what is in the, in the zero place in the list is Bob. N X user one, it's Steve. L and user zero minus my minus one, it's mean to the, the list, we have two value, Bob and Steve. We can create sets. Unlike list, sets are not retrieved by index number and are not sorted. You can query to see if a member exists in the set. This is a set. Unlike set, set cannot have repeating now member with the same key. Redis manage internal storage for sets. You can push and pop a set slot you're doing list. So set fruit apple will create sets which is name fruit. We'll edit apple. Then s member fruit mean what are the member of fruit? It's apple. S is member fruit apple is apple is member fruit and is the value one it mean yes it's positive. Fruit is member of sorry apple is member of fruit so give you you have it now one here. Hashes. Hashes are used to store collection of key value pairs. Hash has one key, but then within the structure, more fields and values. Example, you can use hash to store the current state of an object in applications. So let's here. It said aus 5150. This is hash value. And this is all the value. Num, bed of room, three square feet value. HVAC for Z. So this is the logical structure. House ID, number of room, square feet, HVAC. And this is the value. So if we are running it here, edge get house 5150, five, 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 number of room, it will tell us it's free. So this is how individual tools in the other world. Ashar to do is the edge get command. You can see it here. So this is the hash structure. This is logical structure. Sorted cells. So let's see example of sorted cells. Store the data that need to be ranked. You can see it here. Like a hash, a single key stores several numbers. The score for each of the number is, member is a number. So this is the logical structure. Steve, this is the rank. Owen, this is rank. Jacob, this is rank. So as a user follower, 31, Steve 2, Owen 1, 3, Jacob. How do we retrieve all the members of the sorted set? As range, user following 0 minus 1. So <clears throat> this will give us all the members. How do we retrieve the members in the score order? With this we score argument, you can see it here. So as range, user follow 0 minus 1 will give us all the members from the last to the from the first to the last, we score, so you can have the member with the score. <clears throat> Add you to, uh, sorry, uh, that range user follower, zero minus one with scores, it's here. Score for individual member can be incremented by any valid uh, number with Z increment by, for example, Z increment by user follower 20 Jacob. So Jacob, which, which his score was, uh, one three is now 33. You can see it here. Hyperlog. It's a tender hash to determine whether it's it has seen the value already. If it has the value is not entered into DB. It's keep an systematic count of unique items. Example, bracket all over count of unique visitor to the web to website. 
the FCAM command is used to provide an estimate of the number of unique items within an hyperlog. So in this example, p of add visitor, first time the value has been seen in the visitor key, then integer value 1 is 1. F is returned if the value already exists. You can see it here. P of add visitor is 1. We have, we have the queues like pub and sub, for example. You can create a publisher to a channel called weather with a message of temp, temperature uh, 85. So you can publish it, this. Publish weather temp. So you can publish it. If there is a client subscribed to this, it will receive the message like the following message, weather, and this is the value. We can create a Rachel structure creating weather channel by zip code. So public weather and then temp. We can, we can use client to subscribe to the wildcard to using the, the wildcard pattern. You can see pipe, subscribe, weather, star. So this is uh, another example of publisher and subscriber. We can use the OSPA challenge release. So we can, you can create two data set of, ta of uh, towers. So give away towers, and this is the locations, and this is then with the tower, tower one. We can add another, we'll add another tower two with this, this location. We can calculate the distance between two towers in meters, give this, towers, tower one, tower two, and we can calculate also in miles. Give this tower, tower one, tower two miles. You can see the result here. So <coughs> the time is over, but <coughs> it seems to be over. But we see here, we see here how how we how we <coughs> how we configure uh, how we use Redis. But I recommend to use Redis and transition because of security. In ready setup as addition, you can do password authentication. We can use database access control from the GUI and give you no know, growling for the user who go to the database. We can configure TLS only in enterprise editions. <coughs> so I have three minutes. Let's talk about. Uh, Cloudera also. Just a minute. When we are using SQL Server, you can use Polybase. Polybase enables you to connect to any data source which is a SQL and SQL database. In this example, we are connecting to Cloudera. But when you're in Cloudera, <coughs> when you're using Polybase, Cloudera have several format of file you can connect, which is a <coughs> limited file, RC file, RC file, and parquet file. Each has advantages and benefits. So for in this example, we have fly delay statistic, Excel file. <clears throat> this is Cloudera Manager. This is the interface which enables us to connect to Cloudera, which is Hadoop. In on-premise flavor of Hadoop, we have Cloudera, and we uh, Cloudera, which is uh, which is provider of uh, Hadoop. You can see it uh, from the interface how you can connect to Cloudera. You can upload file with the, uh, which interface which called Impala Query to the uh, Cloudera. In order to upload file to Cloudera, you have to create a user, user, in this example to Cloudera, on the, on the system. <coughs> uh, I think the time is over, so I will leave it to another lecture, but let's, let's say uh, Omer, uh, let's say uh, our moral lessons. Okay, in this lecture, we've passed very, very fast on on uh, MongoDB and Redis. We can see that MongoDB and Redis are the most popular of NoSQL database. Remember that uh, you should, if you want to use the Mon uh, Mon uh, MongoDB or Redis, you should use only the enterprise edition. Why? Because of performance and security.
reasons it's not cheap it's not cheap it's uh, you should know the uh, so this amount of recommendations a fast very fast on MongoDB and Redis I show you how to use MongoDB how you can learn fast MongoDB with noise scale good sir I talk about Redis key value database and the last I touch a little bit about Cloudera which is a do but because my time is over I cannot talk about Cloudera let's leave it to other time uh, but I will upload the uh, the present to the GitHub where you can see and play with your own and learn in very very fast curve MongoDB and Redis using the example in this demo so thank you everyone <clears throat>